Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. Welcome to Bethlehem United Methodist Church. Uh, this morning, uh, Phil, our lay leader, who usually does our announcements and welcome, is uh, ill today. So we want to lift him up in our prayers. And uh, so you'll have to hear me and look at, look at my mug for just a little bit longer this morning. I just want to lift up a couple of things to you uh, this morning. Our uh, beautiful flowers given are given to the glory of God and in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Jewel Hancock and, and Jewel Hancock Jr. by Mr. and Mrs. Jacob Jennings and family. So we're very gracious, grateful for this generous gift. This morning, uh, during our offering time, in your bulletin, there is a little insert about Sarah and her family from Epworth Children's Home. There's an envelope. We hope that you'll be able to give as generously as you can today towards our Epworth Labor Day offering, our Work Day offering. And uh, if not, I'm sure there'll be other times this week that you can drop that off or you can give it uh, next week. We will always send any monies given to Epworth um, all throughout the year, but we certainly appreciate you giving uh, out of the generosity of your heart today. All right, well, that's all I have this morning, so why don't you stand with me? No, actually, you be re remain seated. The choir's going to do their standing. Stand with me for our call to worship. Those who trust in the Lord cannot be moved, but abide forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord.
we want to invite all the kids to come forward for the children's lesson. I got some, got some helpers out in the, in the crowd this morning. So today, we're going to explore prayer, and prayer means talking with God, and there are many, many ways that we can pray. But first, let's get a drum roll going. Give me a drum roll. And as you do your drum roll, I wanna, I wanna, I'm going to I'm gonna say, give me a letter, and I want you to say that letter nice and loud, okay? Because so I've got all my helpers need to help, need to hear, hear you. All right, so here we go. G drum roll, please. Give me a W. Look, there's a W back there. W. W stands for wow. W stands for wow. I want you to think really hard in your mind. We'll put, your think your cap put your thinking caps on. I want you to think really, really hard about your favorite animal. I want you to think about how cool that animal is, what you like about your favorite animal in the whole wide world, what it looks like, what it can do. And now I want you to offer just one word prayer to God. I want you to say, wow. Wow. Yes. You like a snake? Ooh. You can have the snakes. <laughs> All right, so now let's get another drum roll going. Drum roll, please. Give me an eye. I, right back there. All right. I stands for I'm sorry. My grandma used to say, if you mess up, fess up. So anytime you make a mistake, you just say, I'm sorry. And so when we, when we mess up, we can pray to God and we can say, God, I'm sorry. We can say to other people that we've, if we've done something we know we shouldn't have, we can say, I'm sorry to them. So I want you to think in your mind, I want you to think, I'm sorry. You don't have to say it out loud. This is just between you and God, just to say, I'm sorry. Now, drum roll, please. Give me a T. There it is. There's the T. T stands for thank you. God has given us so many <coughs> blessings, and sometimes the best prayer we could offer is to just say thank you. All right, so I want you to put your thinking caps on again. Think about something wonderful like having a loving family or maybe a good friend or something else that you like. And I just want you to say all together, we should say, thank you. All right. Best prayer I've heard all day. All right, one more drum roll. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Uh, give me an H. H right down here. H stands for help. No matter how smart we are, no matter how big we get, we still need help sometimes. And there's plenty of times when others need help. So I want us to put on our thinking caps one more time. Think of something we could use help with, or maybe we can think of someone else who needs help. And now let's pray to God, the one who always listens when we need anything or when others need help. Let's just think about that person or think about a time when we need help. And we can just ask for help. So, did anybody notice what that word spells? W-I-T-H? Wit. And that's an easy way to think about it, because, you know, when we can talk with God anytime, any place, and every step of the way, God is always there to listen to us, and God always is with us. So that's an easy way. So W stands for wow. I stands for, I'm sorry. T stands for, thank you. H stands for, help. So that's an easy way to think about a prayer and do, and do, a, do a good prayer for God. All right, let's pray together, because knowing God listens to us and he always answers our prayers, let's pray to God. Dear God, thank you for being with us every step of the way. Amen. All right, good job, good drum rolls, and good prayers. <laughs>
God does hear our prayers. And today we lift up several from our midst. We have our, our prayer list that has many that we think about and pray for daily. We are celebrating new life. We are praying for medical test results. We are praying for recovery after surgery. We are standing with and praying for those who are in nursing facilities. We pray for neighbors and friends, loved ones, family members, with a variety of needs and blessings. So let us go to the Lord in prayer who listens, who hears, and who answers in powerful ways. Gracious Lord, you know how great our needs are. In these difficult times when jobs are threatened, when homes are being lost, families are experiencing great stress, come and bring your healing love to us. Help us to place our trust in you. Remind us again of how you transform lives, not just with healing, but with a spirit of hope and compassion. Keep us hopeful. Teach us not to give up when things are going wrong. Give us faith that can move mountains. Give us hearts that are ready to be of service to others in all times and in all places. As we have lifted up people in situations in our hearts and on our prayer list, these that concern us and have We've asked for your hand of healing. Remind us that the same healing hand rests on us also. Enable us to be people of compassion and trust. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. And as he taught us to pray, so now we pray the prayer that never fails. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you were able, I invite you to stand with me as we affirm our faith, reciting the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin or on the, in your hymnal on page 881. And we so boldly affirm together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Reconciled people of God, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. You may be seated.
gracious God, there is nothing that we have that has not come from your gracious hand. We are so thankful for the blessings of life that you give to us. And so in this moment, as we give a portion of what we have to you, we offer it in praise and thanksgiving, in union with Christ's offering for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today I will be reading from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. It can be found on page 42 and 43 in your pew Bible. Oh, and I am reading from a New King James Version, so it's a little different from y'all's. From there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, but she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of De Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. But they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
may be seated. Jay Kessler, who is the author of Being Holy, Being Human, he said that one of his goals in life is to wind up with eight men who are willing to carry my handles. To have eight men who are willing to carry my handles. To have someone in death that's willing to, to be there. And also, we want people that will say good things about us too, right? And that says a lot about having someone there for you to carry you at your last. But I also find it striking to strive for a life that has people who will carry your handles now in this life. To have friends who will carry you when you are at your worst and at your lowest. Now our scripture passage says a lot. And some of those things uh, may be disturbing about Jesus saying, well, I'm not going to do anything for you because you're kind of like a dog. That is a striking statement to make, especially coming from Jesus. And there's a whole lot of things that we could talk about. But I just want you to notice a small but very important part to both of these stories. They show someone else coming to Jesus on behalf of another. The little girl and the deaf man don't approach Jesus alone, or even at all. They are aided by others. The little girl is brought in memory by her mother. The little girl is, is absent. And the deaf man is literally carried by people around him, his friends and neighbors. And the call to us today is to approach Christ on behalf of others and actively seek the well-being of those who need help and care. Now this Syrophoenician woman was a Gentile, and Jesus' curt response to her that he was sent to the Jews first didn't deter her. The scripture says that she begged, but the Greek, uh, the Greek translation implies that she begged and begged and kept on begging until Jesus would finally relent and respond. And because of her intense perseverance, Jesus saw this woman's faith as even greater than his own people. Because if you look back in Mark chapter 6, Jesus goes to his hometown to preach, went back for a homecoming service, but yet that went sour. They didn't even receive him, and he couldn't even perform any miracles there because they ran him out of town. And here is someone who doesn't have any business to be around a Jew, comes and begs him on behalf of her daughter. So this woman believed in Jesus, yes, but more importantly, she believed in her daughter. She believed and saw her daughter, as one who was being oppressed by this unclean spirit, that she was absolutely deserving of Jesus' attention, and so she was willing to go to great lengths, lengths to help her, even to the point of arguing with Jesus. Now that's some gumption that I want to have. And while this little girl was not able to come with her mother, we should still recognize that many people don't feel worthy to approach God for their needs but we can bring them with our prayers. We can bring them to Christ with our presence, with our witness. We are emboldened to share God's mercy and love to others and share the truth that we've witnessed in our very own lives. And this same kind of faith was also displayed in the deaf, man, deaf man's approaching of Jesus. And I want you to note here that in the first century, not being able to speak or hear clearly wasn't just, this is not just a story about a deaf man. This is also a man that is ostracized from his community. Physical impairment was seen in the first century as a consequence to sin. And so many deaf people in this time were barred from social and religious institutions. But this man's friends, his community, notice, and, and notice I say his friends, they saw his humanity. They saw him as a valued child of God, and they wanted him healed. And not just healed of his physical impairment, but also they wanted him healed to their community with others. As companions, 
or in situations, if we are companions to others or in situations where we need our companions, we can give voice to God's presence and power in situations like this. And this is never more illustrated than with a familiar hymn that we may sing. Blessed be the tie that binds. We share each other's woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing ear. Tear, excuse me, not ear, but tear. <laughs> Faith is, is, is expressed at its fullest on behalf of others. We are not created in isolation. And we can find our, we will find ourselves more deeply in community. We cannot live this life on our own. We need each other, and we need to be companions to each other. We can share each other's burdens, and we can bring each other to the healing and merciful power of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I would not be standing here today if it weren't for the faith of friends. It's wonderful to have others who will be there for you, who will pray with you and for you, who will stand beside you when the going gets rough and when you need a friendly shoulder to cry on or when you need a shoulder to carry you through. It is a great gift, the gift of friends. Amen? To have people who will stand with you and when you can't stand, that they prop you up, they hold you up and carry you through the darkest days. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, mid-century theologian, he wrote in his beautiful book, Life Together, he said, the Christian needs another Christian who speaks God's word to him. He needs him again and again when he becomes uncertain and discouraged, for by himself he cannot help himself without belying the truth. He needs his brother man as a bearer and proclaimer of the divine word of salvation. The Christ in his own heart is weaker than the Christ in the word of his brother. His own heart is uncertain, but his brother's is sure. So let's look to our community. Let's look around to people that are around us from our own faith community to our friends, to our relatives, in our schools, in our workplaces, in all the circles that we, that we walk, to see the needs that are there and what we might do to bring these folks to the presence of the Holy Christ who loves and cares for them. And like the Syrophoenician woman, it may take persistence. Or it may be as simple as physically caring for someone like the deaf man. But at this time when we are more inclined to isolate ourselves, to close ourselves off to each other, let's soften our boundaries. Let's reach deeply into our souls and be a friend to others, caring for them and bringing the presence of Jesus to them by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Amen? Amen.
and bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those to whom love is a stranger may find in you generous friends. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.